Let's go to items five. Environmental officers update on past commission's actions and report on items of interest update. Code next, five minutes. Hello. Good evening, commissioners. Chris Harrington, interim environmental officer. This will be very brief. So the update on code next is there is no update. So uh, mayor and council have directed the manager to uh, take another look. Um, and think of a, an alternative approach, uh, a different path forward on code next. And so that is occurring now. Staff are taking a little bit of a much needed break. That was uh, a lot of work at a, at, uh, a breakneck speed um, with sort of ever changing deadlines. And so uh, effectively at this point, we are um, uh, standing down, waiting on further direction from the manager. So that's, that's really all that there is to say. There is some, uh, we're, we're sort of, Looking back at the entirety of the process, um, of course, our recommendations, but there, there effectively is no further action until we have clarity from the manager. That's it. Thank All right. you. Any questions for Mr. Harrington? Yes, sir. All right. Commissioner Prowlis. Um, just to make sure that, I mean, some of the recommendations that we made were the result of uh, citizen communication and comments and, and sometimes maybe even some kind of urgent um, issues that had arisen in someone's neighborhood. And so I wonder if it makes sense for us at some point to um, just revisit some of those just because they have to be addressed even if we're not moving forward with Code Next right away. It just seems like we use Code Next as the, as the tool to address those issues because we were in the process of Code Next, but now that it's not, it's not, uh, it's been, I guess, asked, we still need to address those issues. So I wonder if we should arrange for a committee meeting or um, at some point we should kind of just highlight the issues that still need to be addressed. I completely, I think we have a firm understanding of those issues and we concur. There are some, there are minor errors in code that we would love to correct. There are significant improvements that we were hoping to make with Code Next. I think that the challenge is, you know, uh, that's true for lots of departments, obviously. So. Um, with a, sort of the, the break on code next, and I can appreciate this, if, if everything starts happening piecemeal now, you know, what is the, what would be the end result for board and the commissions or the future version of, you know, code next version, sure. whatever. So uh, we, we certainly, we're plugged in, we're, we're paying attention, we're certainly chomping at the bit, ready to come back with some of those very important code revisions. Other things, Atlas 14 obviously will move on its own right. separate parallel pathway. That's a little bit of a different animal. I think as soon as we have clarity from the manager and how to how to proceed, whether or not code next will take a, a revision will take a long time, such that we can go ahead and bring some of those issues that we're ready to bring forward now, separate and apart from code next. Uh, as soon as I think, as soon as we have information on some kind of timeline and how best to move forward in a coordinated manner with all of the other city departments, we'll certainly be back and we'll keep the commission informed. Okay. Um I, I'm okay with that. I just you know again, there were some recommendations we made that. We just used Code Next as the tool. Like, so there was no draft language. An example would be the urban watersheds where there was no cut and fill requirement. And we proposed one because we heard some, some issues that were occurring uh, where that kind of a proposed revision would help. And I, I just don't want it to get lost, especially since it was not in the draft code to begin with. Right. Um, I, I assure you nothing's been lost. Our planning staff are, are, are there. All of that information is there. In fact, we're actually taking uh, some of this time to do some documentation of a lot of the modeling and analysis that was done to support those recommendations, which will be certainly beneficial as a legacy for, for us on the next version or for peers in other parts of the nation. So uh, I, I can only say that as soon as we have additional information, I, moving anything forward at this point would probably not uh, be feasible. I, I sure. can't imagine that we would get much traction right. at, at City Hall. So, uh, but as soon as we get other directions such that we can understand what will happen with the future iteration of Code Next, whatever it looks like, or if that's going to be a longer process such that we're starting over or revisiting information of how we get input from the public and we can move some of those other code amendments forward in the interim, I certainly would hope that we would. As soon as we get information, I will provide it to you. Okay. Um, I guess in the meantime, I, we can continue to encourage residents who are experiencing issues to keep calling their council members and watershed. Uh, absolutely, right? We stand, I mean, that's one of my job functions is to stand ready to receive questions and complaints from the public. So I think folks can, or they're welcome to call me or they can uh, call Watershed or any of our departments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 